Welcome to the Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams, and thank you for joining me on the broadcast or podcast. You can listen anytime at wjmm.com. Go to the podcast tab and then click on the Love and Lordship links, and you'll find today's message and the previous two days' messages. Also, you can see all the videos on vimeo.com forward slash Love and Lordship and all the podcasts at loveandlordship.podbean.com. Over the next few weeks, I'll be sharing some messages that the Lord has laid on my heart from His Word. Each will have to do with our relationship with Him and His with us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and the various roles and interaction that He has with us as we are in Christ, right? I want to begin with the vine, the branches, and the vine dresser. Now, for, as a brief intro to today's message, think about this. The law of gardening, nothing ever looks like it does on the seed packet. Weeds grow at precisely the rate you pull them out. The best way to prune is to put on a wide brim straw hat and some old clothes with pruning shears in one hand, a cold drink in the other. Tell somebody else how to do it. And here's my favorite gardening rule. When weeding, the best way to make sure you are removing a weed and not a valuable plant is to pull on it. If it comes out of the ground easily, you know it's a valuable plant. <laughs> Obviously, you have defeated the purpose there, but at least you know it was a valuable plant, right? The wonderful thing about this is that we are not the vine or the gardener. We are the branches. And that is what the Lord has laid on my heart to share today and tomorrow. We find this in John 15, 1 through 17, the, the uh, talk, Jesus talks about the vine and the branches. And very quickly, this involves God in all three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and us, okay, as the branches. The vine, the source is Jesus Christ, the vine. The source that comes through that is the Holy Spirit. The branches, us, can do nothing apart from the source. In verse 5, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. It's all for naught. We must remain in the vine, receiving the source, Christ and the Holy Spirit, the relationship with him, or our work is futile. It's not about how busy we are, but how well we are abiding in Christ. The key is to abide, and we can only do so if we are willing to allow the third being in this relationship to perform his work on us as branches. For God, the vine dresser or gardener, the Father, God the Father, the vine dresser or gardener, to do all that he desires to do in, in and through us using his double-edged pruning shears, his word. Hebrews 4.12 tells us, says the word of God is sharp, a double-edged sword, sharp, and it pierces even to the, the, the joint and the marrow. Now that's a pruning, right? So with that in mind, as an introduction, there are five things that the vine dresser does as we, the branches, abide in Christ the vine and receive the source of the Holy Spirit. Three of these you're going to love, and he does for us, but I want to spend most of our time on the fourth one because according to the Holy Spirit through John here in this chapter, this is the one that he does to us and is the key to everything else, what we actually reap for his kingdom, the kingdom of God. So here are the first three. Number one, actually there's a lot of alliteration here, so get ready for this, you can remember it easier. Number one, he provides for us. God provides, as long as we abide in the vine, God provides for us. Psalm 37, 2 says, I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. I can not only attest to the righteous being provided for, but the once was young and now old part as well, okay? Um, but the point is, the promise of God is that for those, and now we put that together with the vine and the branches, for those who abide in Christ, he will never forsake us. He will always provide. 2 Corinthians 9.10 in the New Testament says it this way, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. By the way, this assurance of provision comes in what is known as the giving chapter in uh, 2 Corinthians 9, I just read 10. You know that this, in verse 7, 
God loves a cheerful giver. So that's said before. It says that he's going to provide and multiply this. So we can test God in that. Malachi tells us that we can test God, and he will open up the floodgates. Second thing he does as we abide in the vine, the vine dresser, the gardener, God the Father, protects us. God promised to be, and so he is our covering, our hedge, our protection. He removes the hedge from the vineyard if it is not producing. Psalm 5, 5 says this, Now I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall and it will be trampled. There's a reference to another text similar to that in Isaiah that we'll look at a little, little further in this message. In the same psalm, though, Psalm 5, he talks of protection if we are abiding in the vine. Yes, as Christians, we must be abiding in order to bear fruit. In verse 11 of Psalm 5, he says, But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them that those who love your name may rejoice in you. See, God the Father, as we abide in Christ the vine, is our hedge of protection over us. The third thing he does is he prepares us. God and his word, spirit, and righteousness in us through Christ prepare the steps of the righteous, those who are abiding, and gives us the harvest. Psalm 85, 12, and 13 says it this way, The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Those who abide are in the righteousness of Christ, and God provi provides for, for them, prepares them, and then leads them in that way. Now, I, I don't imagine anyone who's hearing this or will hear this have a problem with the Father in these roles. The real struggle comes with the one I said we're going to spend a little more time on, the fourth activity that the vine dresser, the gardener, the Father provides and performs. This is what actually produces and even prospers the fruit in our lives and through us in discipling others to bring fruit in others. This literally is the key, and I know you're chomping at the bit, so, so here it is. The Father... The gardener prunes us. The, this word in the Greek actually also means cleanses. He prunes us and he prunes us and cleanses us. And let me begin by stating this: pruning, discipline. We talked about that in previous messages. Is a good thing. It pruning precedes production and prosperity. You see, the first three are what he does for us by his grace and through Christ's gift as we abide in Christ, the vine. However, along with that, and in grace, so that we can produce and prosper, pruning is what he does in and to us that brings about his kingdom fruit and harvest. In our culture today, we are told that we don't have to receive the pruning. As a matter of fact, it is often wrongly said that if you are struggling or suffering being disciplined, as all are by his word and spirit, or even being punished in his love, which is in his word, Hebrews 12, remember that, being pruned and cleansed, then we are not in his will or being blessed by him. God's word right here in the Gospel of John tells us exactly the opposite. In a fallen world and as fallen people, it is exactly what we need and what a loving God and gardener administers, pruning and cleansing. With regard to punishment in a fallen world full of fallen people, I ran across this recently. In regard to why a good God would punish people, I recently heard one homeless man wisely tell another, you wouldn't want to live in a world where God didn't punish injustices and just freely forgave sin without any request for someone to choose the salvation he offers. Imagine a place where injustice was never punished and people never recognized their sin and need for salvation. That would be terrible and painful. The Holy Spirit comes to convict and teach us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Why aren't servant leaders in the churches willing to be used of the Spirit to proclaim what He has come to do according to His Word? All of this then leads to the fifth thing that our Father, the gardener, does in us, to us, and through us. 
He produces the fruit of his spirit and kingdom in our lives. And we are to bear it so others can know him. Notice there's no, no producing from us. He prepares us. He protects us. He, he, he uh, prunes us. Right? He prepares. He protects. He provides. And he prunes us so that he, the vine, the source of the Holy Spirit through the vine of Jesus Christ, can produce his spirit and kingdom fruit. We are to bear it so others can know him. What does this look like? Well, look at the fruit of his spirit in Galatians 3, and 24. Are these things growing in your life? Are you allowing him to prune you so love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are growing in your life and through your life to others? Remember, this is not our version of these fruits. Not love is a feeling, joy is a feeling, uh, a peace as a state of calm. But each of these is Christ in us. And we experience it and share it and express it through his truth. Then and only then are we true worshipers, John 4, 23 and 24, that the Father is seeking and pointing others to him. The only way we bear any fruit is when we cease to try and produce our own and allow him to prune us of all that is not of him and his kingdom and produce his fruit in us. This is only the only fruit worth, worth, worthwhile in our lives and what we can pass on to others that's worthwhile. Everything else amounts to nothing. Verse 5 of John 15, apart from me, you can do nothing. Remain and abide in me. I read this in a devotional as I wrap up here. The art of discipline. It's found that the context is Isaiah 5, 1 through chapter 6, verse 13, and Luke 1, 67 through 221. So you can check those out. Jesus didn't die for us so that we could continue to sin. He sacrificed himself so that we could have sinless lives. God is patient, but his patience does not last forever. We wouldn't test his patience so often if we had not lost sight of the notion of discipline, pruning, a concept that is at the forefront in the Old Testament. In the book of Isaiah, God describes his people using the image of a vineyard. And now let me tell you that what I myself am about to do to my vineyard, I will remove its hedge and it will become a dis devastation. I will break down its wall and it shall become a trampling. And I will make it a wasteland for it shall not be pruned and hoed. It shall be overgrown with briars and thorn bushes. For the vineyard of Yahweh of hosts is the house of Israel and the man of Judah is the plantation of his delight. And he, Yahweh, waited for justice, but look, bloodshed. For righteousness, but look, a cry of distress. The vineyard described in this passage is eventually restored through Christ, the vine, who creates a new vine in himself and new branches. Yet the vineyard still requires the same level of care and discipline. John 15, 1 through 17. Discipline is the one way that God teaches us to become more like him as he intended us to be in his image, Genesis 126. God disciplines and punishes believers because he cares too much about his people to allow us to throw away all the grace and goodness he offers. If sin had no repercussions, we would live our lives the way we desire, not the lives we are meant to live. And if we don't live the lives we're meant to live, we miss out on God's blessing and lose sight of the goals he has for us, leading others astray in the process. When we openly sin without repenting, 2 Corinthians 7, 10, godly versus earthly sorrow, we discourage others from wanting to live in God's likeness. I'm Greg Williams, and you're listening to The Authority of Love.